This is Coogan Cassis for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're somewhere in Essex. Yep. I'm joined by Connor Ben. Should we tell people there's a baby in the back? <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll soon find out. We don't do this quick time. I know, I know. We're, we're holding out. <laughs> the daughter's in the back. See, see that's Down lovely asleep. because if Eli was in here, no chance, mate. As soon as you, you put the camera out, he'd be straight at it. Really? 100%. He just has a sense of wanting to ruin whatever it is you're doing and make it about him. Well, I'm going to find out a lot about my daughter now because <laughs> she's uh, sound though in the back there. Um, been a few weeks now. Um, even though the fight went short, is there something to reflect on? Can What did you really kind of dissect from that 80 uh, seconds or whatever it was? I think was? all you can take from that is the sharpness, the power, the accuracy, and you know that's what we've been working on this camp is the accuracy mainly i'm not getting carried away picking my shots being selective setting the shots up and and that's exactly what i've done so each fight you'll continue to see progressions in different area different areas the post fight interview on sky lasted probably three times the amount of the fight which wasn't difficult for that to be but you see a few people online kind of saying how emotional and kind of hyped up and lot of kind of, I don't know, not aggression, but I don't know what the right word is, but just that's the time when you're kind of very like, wear your heart on your sleeve and... Yeah, do you know what it is? You know what? It's um, people go, oh, you're so intense and all that. Intense, that's yeah, the word. Intense, rightfully so. I mean, you've got to remember for my whole career, it was, you're not even going to make it past English level. You're not going to make it past Southern area. You're not going to do this. You're living off your dad's name. You're brought... So then it's sort of like, yeah, what, what now? Nah. Like, what to you lot? Do you know what I mean? So you sort of get your back up. I sort of get really... Because um, as a young kid, I had to, at 19, I had to constantly see that. So, and, you know, you're living off your dad's name. You won't make it. You're a small hall fighter and all that. And you hear all these things constantly. Constantly. And you say, you know, it don't, it don't affect you. It does, um, it does come to you, do you know what I mean? In, in different ways. So, um, there you go. What was that on your phone, mate? That picture. There's a reason for that. Ah, it's a bit weird, that, but all right, go on, we we'll carry on with the interview. Do you want to know what that is? What is that? I'll, t I'll tell you what it is. So that was my missus who just rung, yeah? Yeah. There's a picture of an elf that comes up yeah. when she rings. I'll tell you why. It's because around Christmas time, you'll have to do this one day, when you threaten the kids with Santa's not coming, <laughs> yeah. elf's not coming, and they go, you don't even know Santa, you don't even know the elf. So I changed her picture in the phone to an elf. So when she rings... I pretend it's the elf on the phone. So they oh, see the picture yeah. of the elf, right? <laughs> they see the picture of the elf and go, oh, no, 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 I'm being good, I'm being good. You know, that reminds me of my experience when I first met Santa Claus. And um, and Santa Claus landed and was running around the garden. And um, and I didn't, and then I saw Black Santa, didn't I? <laughs> you told me this. My, when it was my dad. And it was, um, I was like, okay, yeah, I know it's... Um, well, that, that ruined that for me, didn't it? <laughs> How old were you? I was young and the dog was chasing after him. And he's gone, get off, get off. And I thought, that sounds familiar. <laughs> it was my dad running round. And, um, and then, yeah, uh, that, was, that was that for me. But back to... <laughs> I, I remember you actually telling me this story. Um, yeah, so from, from that post fight, um, you know, you mentioned quite a few names on there. You know, you mentioned the likes of... Adrian Broner, Khan, etc. And I suppose for you now, it would probably make more sense for you to have, I'm just saying what I think, that an int like, not an interim fight, but a fight before you have one of those kind of names you were mentioning. Is that fair? That's very fair to say. Because obviously, if the fight lasted longer with Argus, we would have you know, seen a lot more, so we couldn't go, boom, well, let's go here. Because it's all, it's all good and well knocking them out in, in the first round. But you got to prove what you're doing in the gym, in the sparring. You, you know, what you're doing in the sparring, in the fight. You've actually, it's actually all got to come off. Um, some of it did come off. There was a lot more left to show. and But then again, you don't get paid for overtime, do you? So, yeah, we'll have one more fight. And then look at, you know, interims. Look at, um, you know, what, what opportunities there are at the end of the year. But I will have, my next fight will put me higher up the rankings, that's for sure. It seems that, you know, with your last two opponents especially, that you've kind of bypassed 
British level without really fighting at British level. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the only British fight that really made sense for me was the Kelly fight. I don't think there anyone there is anyone else better in the UK better than me in Britain. No one better than me, mm. uh, and I believe that based on who I've been sparring, based on who I've been mixing it with, based on who I've been giving a feeling to in sparring in eighteen ounce gloves. Do you know what I mean? You're crushing it in the gym. <laughs> Tony, tell him. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, I know, I know I'm the best fighter in Britain. Um, and the mm. rankings show that. Now, look at, look at the points. People can say what they want, but the rankings don't lie. The numbers don't lie. You know, I do, I do heavyweight numbers on Sky. Numbers <laughs> don't lie. So, um, you know, there's never a dull Conor Ben fight. Um, I'm the number one in the rankings, number two in Europe. So people can say what they want you know you don't get these rankings in the governing bodies for nothing just going back to that what we were saying about how, how kind of intense and I know I saw your, your missus post up saying uh, on that video that we were talking about and uh, you being that intense do you realise you're being kind of like that after a fight because it is kind of the same thing after every fight it seems you're quite chilled out during the fight week you don't really look phased or, or kind of No, I get annoyed you know after I mean? a fight. I get I get annoyed. I get yeah, I get I get the ump. And then you think, well, surely you'd be like happy and I know I get the ump because Why? Just, just like I have people come up to me going, Oh, you know, oh or doubting me or oh this is a step up and it really gets me going just like just the level of doubt. The people have and there's a lot listen I, I can't there's loads of people I mean I was the favourite to win the fight but it's the doubters that really like fuel me you know and if you made the right stuff you come through it and this is where we'll see with Campbell because I see him getting stick now oh you're this because you're dad oh you're that oh you're this oh you're that if he's made the right stuff he'll come through which I'm sure he is but the public the whole of my career being told you're mad to nothing you you soon become driven by that. Did you? I didn't really notice people discrediting the like Vargas after the fight. Vargas had the ump after the fight. We saw that he doesn't believe the fight should have been stopped. He didn't know where he was. He was talking to me in the ring, and he's gone to me when I walked over him to him. He didn't know where he was. I see his eyes rolling at the back of the head when I was hitting him. I was like, he's gone and we're feeling each other out. Uh, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? Have you watched it back? You know, I, I, it would have been an horrible knockout. I wouldn't have mind if it was a horrible knockout, but, you know, I think the ref definitely made the right call. I think call. the ref made a good call because... Of course he did. It, uh, he, he, I hit him, and then I've hit him with the uppercut, and then his eyes have rolled to the back of his head. Then he's sort of, like, gone all flimsy, and it's like, well, what's the what, what's the point? This is only going one way from here. Mm. Yeah, I know how to finish someone off lovely. And it, it was it was getting there. I mean, fight, fighters will tell you the same thing that they'll want to go out in their shield. But the referee in there has got a difficult job of judging, like you said, the way the fight was going to kind of say, right, we, you know, there's no need for what are people happy when they see someone laid across the floor. Well, and then you know, then that's how injuries happen. Yeah, because Vargas would have just stayed there and got a beating. And that's it's the it's the concussive it's the continuous punching to the head that does it. If it was a one punch knockout, fair enough. But then you when you're getting constantly pounded in the head, you know, and not responding, you know, you gotta call it in. You gotta call it. In. We know how tough Vargas is. Sometimes too tough for his own good. But it was only going one way from there. Oh, oh, a bit. Just uh, <laughs> picking this back up. Um, yeah, have you had any conversations with Eddie Hearn about? The potential Amir Khan fight. I mean, Khan's lawyer was in touch with Eddie. Um, I know Eddie and myself and my team were keen to make the fight. Um, I don't think he was so interested. He was um, talking about fights making sense. But yeah, fights are super feather in Billy Dib. Um, gives him short notice, and then fights for Le Greco, and then fights Vargas and gets nailed by him. Who I beat easy. So, I mean, uh, fair way. If, if, any, if any fighter wants to learn how to talk his way out of a fight, you know, ask Khan. So you don't believe he's really interested in that oh, fight? No, nah, of course you ain't. You know, why, who, why would he want to fight me? Do you know what I mean? But then again, he fought Barrera at the end of his career. Do you know what I mean? But he wouldn't want to go out to someone like me. 
he, he'd, um, I don't think it goes past four or five rounds once to get hold of him. But I suppose for Khan, kind of where Khan is in his career, because um, I, I questioned this fight before your win over Vargas and thought, does it really make sense for Amir Khan to take this fight with you? I mean, what's in it really for Amir Khan, this fight? Apart from money aside, which we know Amir's all right in that department, what's really in it for Amir to, to fight you? Well, good beating. That's what's in it for him, which is why it makes sense for him to not take it. So, and you know, you can't blame him, but you know, this is that crossover of you know, up and comers, idols to rivals, it's that sort of um, crossover. Um, it won't make sense for Khan to take the fight. I wouldn't take the fight with me if I was Khan. So, but when you look over Amir Khan's career as a whole, the level of opposition that he's faced it don't matter on the whole, where, it don't matter what he's done, it's where he is now, and it's where I am now. So it don't matter what he's done, he can have fought, you know, he could have fought King Kong three fights ago. It's where he is now, at what stage of career he is now. Why would he want to fight me? You know, we're at two different levels, so to speak, in terms not levels, but I mean in terms of, you know, he wants he'd fight the likes of Kell Brook or um, people with enough credibility to lose to, rather than myself. He won't go. He, he won't go out like that. I don't think. But then again. You know, if he was that confident in beating me, he'd take the fight. But, I mean, from your point of view, and I had this conversation with someone the other day, that I don't blame you for, you know, it make, the fight makes more sense for you to take. Well, yeah, but then it's like all these other bods calling me out. So, it's like all these other fighters calling me out. It's the same It's the same thing. I ain't interested in them. Would I fight them? No, not at all. I don't, I don't need a payday, if that's what they're saying. I don't, so it makes no sense. But then again, I'm at a stage where I'm all about progression. I don't know uh, where, you know, the calm fights. That would be a you know massive step up for me. But again, another fight like I'd prove myself in. But yeah, I think for you, you I'm assuming you'll be out in the summer at some point. July. That's what we're aiming for. Uh, might go out to America for a training camp with my trainer, and and see see what happens. But yeah, definitely July. I'd like to get out two more times before the year's up, for sure. Um, just finally, what did your dad say about your win over Vargas to you? Ah, uh, he's like, he's just like, I expected nothing less. And and then, do you know what, neither did I. I was just hard work, man. Oh, I didn't expect nothing less. Did your dad like the fight with Khan for you? Have you spoken about that with yeah, him? Yeah, he wants to fight with Porter. He wants to pull a fight. Yeah, it's funny. He would definitely wants to pull a fight. Because everyone's going, oh, yeah, no, nah, he can't beat Paul. He can't do this. He can't do that. You lot keep carrying on with all that ru rubbish. It's funny, isn't it? It's funny, mate. Honestly, it's like... It's just funny, isn't it? That's all I can say to that. You get funny people out there. There's a lot of interesting people in boxing. <laughs> Very and, interesting. And you've not met half of them yet. I have met enough. enough. And, I'm not, and, I'm not, and I'm not meeting any more, that's for sure. Got elf calling again. Elf calling. All right, well, listen, I'm going to let you crack on with your day. Um, and um, yeah, we'll catch up anyway. I'm off to Manchester next week. But we will I'm catch not up. I've seen you this evening. Possibly. Let's <laughs> 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 try to keep that on the old uh, QT. Uh, but yeah, I am seeing you later on this evening. Are you cropping yes. this bit out? No. No, okay. No. I don't like to crop things out. Do yeah, you know I am seeing you later on. Raw and uncut. Raw and uncut. Yeah, I want a job if boxing doesn't work out for me. All right, you've always got a job there. Thank you, mate. Connor Ben, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV, and uh, we'll catch up with you again soon. Thank you, mate.